What's up guys, Winter Kills here. Welcome back to yet again another post commentary dual video. As per usual, um We've got some not as per usual we have this matchup, but as per usual, you know, we're back with the the post commentary. You know how it is around here. Anyways, uh back to this matchup which we have here, which is uh your Paleozoic Frog. Those super rare Ronin Totems and Dupe Frogs, and that Alti Swap Frog looking so goddamn clean. Going first turn Toad and setting three back row against some Zodiac. Uh, I think he's playing the Predaplant engine, the new engine involving the, uh, the basically it's a new Terra Top engine. The one allows you to special summon from your hand by discarding a monster, and then you can special the one from the, the from your main deck, and when that one is special summoned, you can add a polymerization card or a fusion spell card so into fusion brilliant fusion uh fusion substitute regular polymerization um should all fusion you name it you can um you can grab it it's a very good engine it's just it's a little less uh reliant because you do have to have a monster in hand to discard um but very good nonetheless i, I bought like six packs of uh maximum crisis i was gonna do a uh you know, a $20 diagram challenge, but right now is not the best time to just uh, randomly spend money on packs, even though that's what I did. Uh, I didn't drag my friend into it because he wasn't there at the moment. Um, I didn't really pull anything, but I did pull some of the rare... Uh, I pulled a Zark as a secret rare. Could you believe it? Um, you know, just my luck. But I pulled uh, two of the Pride Plant rares, basically the new Terra Top and one of the Tekken Tomborg equivalent. Um... But looks like he's going to go into Invoker here. He did steal that Book of Eclipse earlier with a Toad. Giving him a heads-up advantage right now. Being able to stop his field if he needs to. And any sort of like um, th thing that can change battle position is very good against you. Because you put any of their zoo stuff face down, it stops their play. Because um, then they can't exceed uh, through the Zodiac method. This is a 60-card build I think my friend here on the right is playing. Um, and yesterday, if you saw yesterday's video, which was true, uh, Draco, not true Draco, true King Dino versus Invoked, if you saw that video, you heard me talk about how later I was going to be, uh, going to my card shop to meet up with some friends to test for YCS Pittsburgh, which is a go, uh, we'll be leaving on the 12th, around like 5, I think, yeah, hopefully, uh, that is the plan. But we're, we're meeting up pretty much every day this week until that day on Friday. Um, currently, I think it's Wednesday right now. So we'll be meeting up today and tomorrow trying to sell a lot of things. Um, there's the Brilliant Fusion play coming down. Didn't even need to search it off the Prada Plant uh, engine. Just ended up drawing into it. Uh, sending, uh, I think that's Garnet and Fairy Tale Snow. So definitely some decent targets there. There is the Predator Plant monster I was talking about. He'll discard a monster and special summon the one from his deck. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, as he summons us out here, uh, I think it's Cobra or whatever its name is. Um, yesterday I didn't get to rec I didn't bring my recording stuff. Um, and I was gonna grab my friend Adam's True Draco Zoo profile, uh, but I completely forgot to. So I'm gonna have to get that today. I'll be meeting up there in like two hours or so. Um, so I'll try to get some deck profiles. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to record any matches, um, because they're just testing matches, so there are bound to be some mistakes, but I might still end up bringing my recording equipment anyways. I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I still got some time to decide. I wanted to sit down, though, before I did leave to, to get a video, guys. Uh, get a video, guys? Get a video up for you guys to watch. Um, but yeah, right now, uh... Paleo not looking like it's in too good of a spot right now. One dupe frog. I think he's going to pass. Interesting enough. Not going to go in to anything else. And then he's going to normal summon swap frog, which is very good. I think he ended up sending swap frog. Can go for a rank two play. We really haven't seen any Paleo cards at the moment. There's a couple in grave, but we haven't really seen any get on the field as of yet. So he's going to go into Digusto Phoenix. 
which can target himself, I think, to uh, double its attack or something like that. And he's going to use Ronin. And summon out some Toads. I think he just banished two. Now he's got to see if he's got a response here. But I don't think there's really uh, much anything he can do. But it looks like he's going to go for Fairy Tale Snow. He might have to banish. Yep, he's going to have to banish the rat. And there's a solemn strike for the Fairy Tale Snow. It's not looking too good right there. That's a, that's a complete shutdown. And then he's going to definitely go into Totally Awesome here. The Invoker and the Protoplant Engine, not too much of a threat at all. Leaving the Invoker on the field. No, never mind. That's right, I guess the Phoenix attacks twice. That's what it does. It doesn't gain attack. But he still has that set Book of Eclipse, and that right now is the biggest threat. Um, he really can't assemble a field right now with that being on his opponent's side of the field now. And he's going to use Toad's Effect to get himself a Summon of a Dupe Frog. So now Dupe Frog is the only monster that can be attacked, I believe, unless Digus of Phoenix can still be attacked. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's still just applied to Dupe Frog at this point. And it looks like that's going to be it, and they're going to go to game two. Um... Just uh, like the the zoo player, he had plays, but they just weren't enough to to grind through the the double solemn strike and the, that set book of eclipse was just looming in the background as a as an ever present threat. Terror top engine coming right out the bat, going into invoker, and it's met with a one of max C. How is the uh, <laughs> we have a sixty card deck opening up the terror top engine in both games? And then we have this, I think it might be a 40 card deck of uh, uh, Paleo Frog. Opening up the one of Max C, interestingly enough. And he's going to go right into, of course, Rat Pierre. Will he continue on? I'd figure not. Just going right into Dryden, giving him one uh, one extra draw off that. You know, the one for turn, and then the two extra. I guess it's two extra. Um, setting five. And passing immediately, Morella is activated. He's gonna foolish a trap card now. Probably gonna be some sort of Paleozoic trap, and it's gonna be Dynamiscus. One of the better Paleo traps. Who am I kidding? They're all good. One of the most important things you can have against Paleo is, uh, besides Danko Seca and trap hate in general, is just being able to disrupt your opponent's chains. Right now he has D barrier. If he wants, doesn't want that Morella to come out, his best bet is to tr chain his Dryden to pop something in response to the D barrier. Or else he's gonna be able to summon something out. Either or he's just gonna decide to let it happen anyways. The fact that his invoker is negated, you know, no big problem until me till the end of the turn. Um, but the Dryden definitely hurts. Now that Dryden has any say in this sort of uh, moment strictly because, you know, Dryant's not going to pop anything other than, um, I guess you could pop the f that at that point then the face up quaking. Um, and I'm, I don't know if uh, all of your set cards get, even if you have defense position stuff, if it gets flipped face down. Um, and there's an Olenoides, I think. Tribute summon for the Dogran, though. That's interesting. But I uh, I can't remember if Quaking was the... Uh... Ooh, hitting a Solemn Strike. That's got to hurt. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember if that Quaking was... Uh, if it's just all monsters your opponent controls or only attack position monsters. I guess it's all monsters. Um, which is interesting enough. Uh, very good for the Paleo player in this situation. We're going to be able to go for rank 2. going to go for Opabinia. Detaching to add a trap. And I think this one allows him to activate traps from hand. I believe. And he's going to do just that. To activate the MST effect. Hitting a Imperial Order, which is so bad in this matchup. Uh, and then normal summoning a Dupe Frog going into... Uh, <laughs> They're totally awesome. Reviving the Morella off the activation of that Olenoides. Now he's got to deal with a totally awesome Ghost Ogre. In response. 
I don't see there's really any point in negating the Ghost Ogre. But he will add back the Dupe Frog, definitely. Zoo player with limited options. Paleo is still doing what it does best, grinding out this matchup. There's Zodiac Barrage. And it looks like it's going to go through, surprisingly enough. Going to go for... If he can get a Zoo combo off, I'd say he's in a great spot. But I think he's already used one rat. So he's just going for now the Whiptail instead of rat. Because I, I don't think going for rat at this point would be best anyways. You're better off getting a, a Zodiac monster with some attack points. Overlaying into Broadbull first. And it's going to get met with Solemn Strike. Again with the Solemn Strikes. Very, very good card for Paleo. Setting one monster. And passing it back over to the Paleo player. Things are getting down to the wire here. No cards in the Zodiac player's hand. Adding a Canadia off the Obovinia. Gonna activate it to Book of Moon. And then summon a uh, Dynamiscus from Grave. Now he has another rank 2 play. The one thing I always say about... Uh, Paleo, if you, the more rank 2s you let them get, the harder it becomes to win the matchup. And at this point, now that he's going for um, Anomalocaris, it's pretty much uh, it's game over at this point. You don't really ever go for Anomalocaris unless you're in a winning position. Um, and he's going to hit a set. I don't even know what that card was. Um, might have been a proxy for something, I'm not entirely sure, but he's going to go into Downer Magician over top of the Opavinia. Might as well. Do some piercing damage to punish the set cards. And there's a Raigeki in response. And I think he's going to chain Reckless Greed. It's like kind of a confusing chain link here. I'm not sure what Anomalocaris is going to have to do in response to this. So he'll draw two. Not summon anything out of Grave. I don't really see the point in that move, but... I don't see why he needed to chain a, a Reckless Greed to a Ragaki or clear in a winning spot at that point. Demise. Discarding a Solemn Strike, but it's fine. He's got five set back row. Can't draw and he passes... A, he's going to pass back, perhaps. Last turn that he can't draw. Not sure what else. A Morella at this point would be very helpful. Olenoides on his own back row. And then summoning two. Looks like on separate chains. And I'm assuming he did not call Ixies off of his D barrier. Not sure how that whole situation would have worked. Um, interesting. Hmm. Uh, I think I think it is fine though because I'm thinking because you can't summon two and oh hitting a sl taking that slumber, rough. Um, I think what I'm getting confused is the fact that you can't activate per se a reckless greed and then summon all of your. Uh, Paleozoic's engraved, that would be busted, so I'm assuming that's why he activated the, the D-Barrier in response so he could get an additional summon from Grave instead of just summoning multiple Paleozoic's off of one trap card activation, so I think that makes a little more sense to me now. Going in the double Dew frog here has the option going to rank 2. I think a Toad at this point would seal the deal. He's got a set Slumber. I don't know if he can use it. I don't know if he plays uh, Kaijus in his main deck, but I guess it's better that he takes it from him, so at that point he cannot use the Graveyard effect to search a Kaiju to out something like that toad right there. He'll pass back, standby phase, summon Swap Frog. And that is going to be it. Paleozoic Frogs taking the 2-0 victory over 60 card Zodiac. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Don't forget to click the annotation on the screen. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, Winter Kill signing out. We'll see you in the next one.